Hello and welcome back to the Q&A. So, if, as always, if you have a question you want to ask, just leave it down in the comments and I'll get to it. So, um, yeah, one thing I should probably say, tomorrow's schedule might be just a tiny bit affected by um, the fact that I'm, that's what I'm kind of moving back home for at least the Christmas kind of fortnight. Um, so, yeah, it'll be nice to be home, actually, because honestly, this last week of, like, two weeks of university, uh, it's just been fucking shit. I mean, it's been really fun, but... The whole, like, four to five hours of sleep a night, and then, well, the weekend was especially fun. That ended up being four hours of sleep and about 50 hours of solid work. Which, it was weird, it was horrific, but at least we have, a, like, a game that has a really cool particle system made, so that was fun. Um, also, the nice reason to get, like, the nice thing about getting home is, I can just bloody work out a bit and actually get healthy, because a part of having all that work to do with university is, you end up eating like shit and you look like shit. And it, oh, it's terrible, just like fucking random spots appear out of nowhere. It's annoying. Like, my face has usually got zero spots or anything like that, but now I'm all fucking self-conscious. Damn you, Western society, and your... Ugh, whatever. Anyway, so let's actually move into the actual questions, which are probably what you're here for. The first one comes in from Dustin Gettings, who says, If woe didn't exist, what would, um, or what do you think your main MMO or game would, uh, would be? Huh, that's an interesting one. First of all, the MMOs that I've played are Aeon, Final Fantasy XIV, Star Wars The Old Republic, Guild Wars 2, Lord of the Rings Online, and then, of course, World of Warcraft. Those other MMOs have really lasted no more than a month each. Aeon, I just didn't think it was that great. The same goes for Final Fantasy XIV. I... I did put, a, I'd say, a 30 hours maybe into that, and I just think it's bad. I don't think it's that good. I think it's overhyped as fuck. Um, and also a strange thing is that I know it was kind of going for the really kind of high fidelity sort of art style, but even on my system, which at the time I was only, I only had the 167 instead of the SLI setup that I had na have now, but it never particularly looked that good, which I thought was weird, and I just... Ugh. Yeah, I don't think it was that great. Next, we have Star Wars The Old Republic. That game was friggin... Ugh. God. Questing was just about the most tedious thing on the planet. The whole um, thing about every quest being voice acted, and um, having its like little mini cutscene, and the radial menus, and all these RPG elements. Well, the problem with that is they were there for every quest. Imagine if you were going to a base, and you have five basic like fetch quests to pick up, right? And for every one of those, you had to listen to... Oh, how much? Maybe uh, four minutes of, not four minutes of dialogue, like maybe a minute of dialogue. So in total, like five minutes of dialogue. Otherwise, you're just sitting there going fucking space bar, space bar, space bar, constantly like that to get through all the damn dialogue. And it's just a pain in the arse. It's funny. I, pref I nearly prefer the way Woe does its storytelling in that you have just all the kind of regular quests. But then wh you know that when they're actually going to do voice acting, and uh, they're going to do like lots of, just throw lots of more elements storytelling wise into a quest. That's a quest that they have segmented out as something they're really going to focus on with story. And I kind of like it when they do that. So yeah, there's Star Wars The Old Republic. And um, I did find its PvP to be rather fun. And I suppose the whole Star Wars element to it did serve it well. So that's good. Um, next, Guild Wars 2. Well, my problem with this game is the end game was essentially leveling. And uh, that might sound weird, but the thing is, once you hit max level, you still have all the zones to go through and fail out, but it just always felt like a checklist. The PvP wasn't gear-based that much, so I suppose there wasn't a massive amount of progression there. And World vs. World just was essentially a ginormous Zerg. But I'd imagine that if you are just there purely to be in a, a guild-based PvP setting, then it's probably quite a fun game. And there's probably a lot of depth in there once you get into it. Uh, from a player versus environment perspective, it just was really bad in my opinion. Um, I didn't enjoy any of the dungeons I did. I didn't think they had a patch on what World of Warcraft can do. And they didn't really have anything that was the same in epicness to a proper WoW raid. That was the thing they just didn't get. And even the big dragon bosses, which were one of the like the main things, you know, that you go and kill, they essentially boiled down to spending a ver just ages kind of standing there with a really mechanically simple fight. And I just never thought it was really that interesting. It never really grabbed me. Um, but still, I, like, I, it is definitely a good game. So, uh, hmm. 
It's probably one that's worth revisiting. I know it has been getting incremental updates and that kind of thing, so I'd say sometime when I actually have the free time, which probably won't be for a good while, like, I, I do still have my Guild Wars 2 account and all my characters. That's the nice thing about that game. It's kind of like, it's, it's a great other MMO. I don't think it's a great main MMO, but it's nice to always have there because you spend, what, the £40 or whatever it is to get in initially, and then it's just free. So I think that's really kind of nice. And then next we have Lord of the Rings Online. It's essentially very similar to World of Warcraft. I never got into it. Um, I love Tolkien, I love Lord of the Rings, it's probably my favourite, in terms of like actual book fantasy fictional worlds, I think that and, um, well, huh, well I know Middle Earth, I suppose the, the Tolkien mythos and then the George R. R. Martin one with um, Game of Thrones and that series, they're probably my favourite, uh, my favourite things, so really I'm quite happy that, um, uh, yeah, the Lord of the Rings Online is a thing. I just never really got into it. Another strange thing about Lotro, though, right? When you think about the Lord of the Rings movies, the epic things you think about are, like, uh, Minas Tirith, uh, fucking um, the Hornburg. Okay, Helm's Deep to the movie people. The actual castle's called the Hornburg. Helm's Deep's just the uh, geographical sort of deep that it's in, I guess. But anyway, that aside, they were always the really awesome things that you thought about, right? When you thought Lord of the Rings. Um, and... It's only just got to the point where Helm's Deep's in the fucking game. I mean, if if that game had came out and it may be covered... It's hard. Like, if it may be covered up until, like, one of the major battles or maybe just uh, only a few patches before it, then I really think that would have done the game well because a lot of people would be thinking, holy shit, it's a Lord of the Rings game and I can go in and in a few months or whatever, I'll be able to do Helm's Deep and it'll be epic. I think they should have, like, they really should have did that. So, as to what other MMO I would play, I'm going to say Guild Wars 2 is probably the one. Um, in terms of ones that are on the horizon, there's nothing that really has me ultra-enthused. Wildstar is, from everything I've heard, very similar to WoW, but also very well accomplished with a great art style, and overall just an excellent-looking, solid game. And uh, that's what I've heard from beta testers and lots of stuff like that. Of course, all those beta testers broke the NDA by talking to me, but hey, that's, that's what happens. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I haven't got my hands on a beta key or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, well, whatever. I'd say I'll probably end up trying out Wildstar at some point. So there's that. Next, we have um, Elder Scrolls Online coming up. I covered that in my last episode. Lots of people got butthurt about it. Listen... To those people who thought I was just hating on it because I'm someone who likes WoW, no. The re I really like World of Warcraft, therefore I want Elder Scrolls Online to be fantastic because I want there to be more competition because that is what forces Blizzard to make a better game. Competition is what forces people to respond to World of Warcraft and make a better game, but really... Not a lot of companies have managed to pull that off. So if Zenimax, with all the money that they are being, you know, that's thrown behind them, I really think Elder Scrolls Online would be great. But mainly to ask your question, what M main MMO do I think I would play? Probably Guild Wars 2, but maybe not. Actually, no, no, we it, fuck it, it'll be Rift. Of course it'll be Rift. It's like WoW, it's very well executed from what I hear, the boss fights and dungeons and raids and things are all very good, so yeah, it's probably going to be Rift. Um, as for other games, because you did say slash other game, that's a hard one, because I play lots of games, actually. Um, lots and lots and lots of games. I haven't got to recently, though. One of the funny things that we've all sort of noticed is, is that because we are game development students, which, I don't know why the course title is development, it's programming. It's games fucking programming, which is the same as other programming, just that you get somewhere... Well, it's a bit harder than a lot of other programming, I guess. That's not me trying to toot my own horn, that is literally just what the university says when you're making your application and deciding what course you want to get into. Um, so because of that and all the time that's taken, none of us have actually had any time to play games. Which is weird, other than WoW, and hell, even this last month, the only WoW I've been able to play is literally just footage for my different shows and the research that I need to do, which is unfortunate. But uh, yeah, it'll be nice to get the time. And in terms of games that I've played, I'll, I will do like... Uh, some Christmas top 10 or something, but I'd say The Last of Us, um, Bioshock Infinite, they're definitely up there, The Walking Dead. Um, in terms of, like, shooters, I really enjoy Battlefield from time to time. Um, I actually, this sounds like blasphemy, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, I've got about 40 hours in that game, and it's just a guilty pleasure, and I don't know why, but I'm just really fucking good at it. Um, I can go into games all the time, and, like, in a free-for-all, get 30 kills, which is the maximum, and then about 5 deaths. So, it, it's good fun. It's funny, in, in games like that, I prefer to just do free-for-alls because I don't want to be bothered with a team. 
Um, but yeah, still, it wouldn't be a main game that I could put a lot of hours into, though. <clears throat> Whoa. What the fuck did you do there, throat? That was a weird noise. Anyway, there's also um, Total War. Fucking love myself some Total War. Unfortunately, Rome 2 was a little bit uh, disappointing at launch, but I'm hoping to jump back into it now that it's got like 10 or 12 patches. Um, in general, there's, there's just so many games that I like, you know. Uh, Team Fortress 2 is another one. But I think that's that question pretty well covered. Uh, next, let's move on to question 2 from Buckeye Breeze, who says... And uh, what does he say? Yes. Why do people say the Mists of Pandaria was bad? What? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, for a second, I, I just looked at uh, Open Broadcaster and I thought that uh, I was on preview mode, not stream mode, which wouldn't have been recording, so that was that was kind of lucky. Um, so yeah, he says, why do people say Miss of Pandaria was bad? I personally think it was a huge stray story-wise from how WoW expansions are. They're kind of normally a bit more dark. I wouldn't say dark, but I suppose... Well, yeah, I know what you mean by dark, I guess. Yeah, I, what you mean is definitely correct. It's not like a big main looming theme for a lot of the expansion until they realized, hey, we should just make Garrosh the main enemy. And I know they kind of set that up from the start, but it only really came to the fore in patch 5.1. So yeah, why do people say Mist of Pandaria is bad? Huh. Well, up until patch 5.1, a lot of it was, I guess. Um, the Mogushan Vaults place is pretty cool. Um, I don't know many people who really enjoyed the Manted Raid. I didn't enjoy it that much, honestly, but that was more of an aesthetic thing. And I just thought some of the fights, the mechanics, they were very needlessly clunky in some places, so I didn't really like that. Uh, Mogushan Vaults I really enjoyed, and uh, what's it, apart from the end boss, um, and then the Terrence of the uh, Maternal Spring fucking somethings, whatever, that was cool, apart from the Shah of Fear, or the Shah of Anger, whatever fucking Shah was at the end, that boss was awful, it took 15 minutes, and not one of those 15 minutes was fun, but the other bosses in there, I really did enjoy, so yeah, overall, I think patch 5.0, uh, zero. It had a kind of mediocre rating thing. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't that great. And then in combination with that, it had a ridiculous, 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 absurd, and did I mention ridiculous amount of dailies? Unfortunately, patch 5.1 added to that, and so did patch 5.2. That was just so bad. Now, patch 5.2, I actually thought was, a, it was weird. Aesthetically, I guess not my favorite raid, but mechanics-wise, I really enjoyed a lot of the bosses, and I think that was definitely a step up. I think where the expansion started getting good, though, was patch 5.3. Now, I know in itself, 5.3 wasn't a great step, but it was the whole... Um, just that whole more dynamic sort of uh, nature to the questing, that kind of thing, that was great. And then patch 5.4 really added to that again, and we have seen, in terms of subscription numbers, the dip has been decreasing. So I think what Mr. Pandaria did wrong was, um, first of all, the difficulty of Heroic Dungeons... I think they should have been harder, even in Wrath of the Lich King they were a bit harder than what they were in uh, in Mists. So that was definitely unfortunate. Um, yeah, I don't, sorry, th this is really fucking annoying me. It appeared yesterday, I think I was bitten by something, which, um, which is really annoying, getting my nerves. Maybe, no, I don't know, I, I just remember being bitten by some fucker and then I squished it. And then that appeared. It, was, it wasn't even yesterday. Oh, I'm a bloody idiot. But anyway, so, yeah, there was the dungeons. They were... They were just too damn easy. Scenarios were a good idea, but once again, until heroics were brought in, they were too damn easy. So that's kind of a problem. Um, what other things? I think flexible difficulty was a fantastic addition. Looking for raid also, I think that really burnt out a lot of people because of the way difficulty kind of worked out on that. So yeah, there's, there's really why I think it was bad. In terms of why I think it was good though, the addition of flex, fantastic. Patch 5.4, all in all, very good. I think it's unfortunate though, that um, the usual sort of thing is the three months after the main content patch is when we get another little patch to tide us over. Because they're busy working in Warlords of Draenor, are we going to have that patch? No, we're not. They've already said we're not. So we're going to be left on patch 5.4 for quite a while, and I think that'll be an issue. They just need to get Warlords out of the gate really quickly. Now, I haven't done a woe daily on this, but the Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls um, release date is in March. I think it's the 24th or 5th? Something like that. Now, what that means is that essentially they're, they're not going to release two games at once, right? And I very, very much doubt the you know Warlords is not coming out before that. Solidly isn't. And I'm actually going to revise what I when I think Warlords will come out to probably. Could it be June? Could it be April? Now there's a problem with that, right? If it comes out in April, then that's uh, let's see September, all of September, October, November, December. Uh, January, February, 
March, April is nine months. Now, nine months has always been the magic number of Warcraft fucking itself over when it comes to... Um, wow. Yeah, just looked again, open broadcaster. God damn it, the lighting really is fucked up. I need to get something set up. But anyway, nine months is that magical number of the game completely shooting itself in the foot in between expansions. I... Oh, I, I think this is just one of the biggest problems Warcraft needs to get over. I know a lot of those people will come back after they quit for a few months, but... Like, we're only... Uh, we are actually exactly three months after patch 5.4 came out. We are three months after, nearly nearly to the day. Well, not to the day, but it's about eight days more. So, um, are you going to be able to last for this time again, and then once over, before Warlords comes out? Are you going to be able to last for that? I mean, a lot of guilds are already clearing out um, Siege of Mar now, so... Yeah, I mean, uh, it's worrying that whole way. Anyway, that's it for today's show. If you want to support the channel and support me, then you can use the links and things like that in the description. I don't know why I, be, I was carrying this fork for... I, it wasn't even... Like, why? I got a fork. Um, <laughs> the random shit you do when you're talking. So, anyway, yeah, if you want to support the channel, links in the description. If you have a question to ask, um, just stick that in the description. I'll add it to my big Word document. Um, don't worry, I will get past, like, I will get through it. There, there's quite a lot in it, but that's always a good uh, thing to be in. A good, good place to be in. Anyway, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.